Emmerich James Conrad. Uh, I'm an uh, artist, painter, and I'm very much an LA artist. I, I 100% identify with being an LA artist. I think when I moved here, it was very much like Alice falling down the rabbit hole. It was this very rich, creative environment that was cost effective to miscreants and dropouts and drug addicts and alcoholics and very amazingly creative people. It was this very strange oasis that promoted art. You know, I mean, you lived on the streets. You lived, you sold to your friends and you sold to the film industry. And then it started growing and becoming bigger and bigger. It's like, I always say, it's like mushrooms in the dark. You know, we were all full of shit. And uh, it was really, really dark. But we kept growing and growing and growing. And eventually there's enough mushrooms that the world starts paying attention to it. What New York did to Paris in the 1950s, L.A. is now doing that to New York. And all the New Yorkers who used to talk shit about L.A., they're all moving here now. And they're all moving to downtown. Yeah! I have got great Richard Kessler stories. So I'm doing a show with Richard Kessler at a gallery, actually, in uh, Arizona. It's called the Fred Taken Gallery. If you happen to be on the border of Paradise Valley and Scottsdale, I'm right next to where Alice Cooper plays golf. It's called The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly with The Good Crossed Out. So basically, XXX, The Bad and the Ugly. And I'm excited about the show, and, and I love Kessler. I mean, I've, Kessler and I have known each other for well over 20 years. And uh, our work is similar but different. We both speak the same language, but our accents are drastically different. That's Kessler and I. The artwork itself tends to create its own conversation, you know, because you look at one of his paintings and it's across from one of my paintings, and there are enough similarities to draw you in, but they're also different enough to make you notice the differences in technique and, and subject matter and how we execute what we're doing. You know, it makes it fun. And art should also entertain, and it, it, it should be engaging. Ugly and beautiful are exactly the same thing. I think something can be beautifully ugly and something can be ugly beautiful. The way we look at things is that we tend to categorize. I mean, we, everyone, human beings do it. You look at somebody walking down the street and right away you have kind of a feeling if you like them or don't like them. And a lot of it has to do with physicality. You know, even before someone opens their mouth, you look at them and if their eyes are you know, not lopsided and, you know, their nose is a certain way and their mouth is a certain way. They're pretty and we, we tend to be attracted to that symmetry. At the same time, you see an ancient oak tree that is so gnarled and twisted and, you know, you know it's been around forever and it's actually the ugliest fucking thing in the universe. At the same time, it has a classical beauty. Because ugly looks like it survived. Beautiful looks like it's just living. And I think that that kind of conversation is very important. And, and that's where we came up with the title. The bad and the ugly are still there. And you can decide if Kessler is the bad and I'm the ugly or if he's the ugly and I'm the bad. But that's you have to, your own determination. But there is no good. <laughs> the good is crossed out.